We've talked previously about the user's perspective on access. Now let's go and talk about the architect's view of access and what the architect sees and how the architect thinks about access that's maybe a little different than how the end user does it. The end user, I think it's fair to say, doesn't really think much about access until they can't find something. The architect, of course, is always thinking about access. It's always part of what the, ac what the architect has to do. The user has a fairly complicated view of access. They think there's all these different widgets, all these different ways of getting to things, and there's always new ones, and, and people are inventing them, and they're moving around the screen, and it's never really figured out. It's never really comprehended entirely. So it's a very complicated view of what it means to access things and how you go about accessing things. On the other hand, they have a very simple problem. Their problem is simply just to get to a piece of information that has relevance to them in a particular context. Now we're going to contrast that with the architect's view. The architect's view, on the other hand, they have a really complicated problem. Their problem, their issue, is to serve the needs simultaneously of a lot of different users, a lot of different end users who all need to find information, a lot of authors who all need to create that information, a lot of publications where that information is going to go, the way that information is going to be stored, the efficiency of storing it and tagging it, its quality, all of those issues come together and they, all, they have to find a way of organizing information that serves all those needs. The managers have to be served, the authors have to be served, the publication people have to be served, the information storage people and IT people have to be served, and of course, first and foremost, the users have to be served. So they have a very complicated problem. On the other hand, as you'll see in a moment, they have a really simple view. They have a very simple view, or can have a very simple view, of what this information is. And we've already, of course, discussed that view a number of times. Information comes in types. Those types have items, and the items are organized by access structures. But furthermore, the access structures themselves really come in only four basic varieties that are mixed and matched and represented different ways in different contexts or, or in different times to create different navigational widgets. So what are those four kinds of access structures? What are those four basic ways that information is organized? Well, you'll hear them over and over and over again in this course. Hierarchies, indexes, cross-references or associations. I go back and forth between how I call those, cross-reference or associations, and sequences. And those four basic ways of organizing information can be exposed in a myriad ways in web navigation. So that variety, that intense variety of web navigation techniques really can be boiled down to four different methods of organizing. Now those methods can also be hybridized. They can be brought together, they can be um, matched together to make more sophisticated and more complex ways of, um, of navigation or navigational widgets. But we're going, to, um, uh, we're going to start by just looking at the basic four and how those four differentiate from each other. And of course, as usual, as we get further and further into figuring out how they're different, I'll then begin to bring them back together again and synthesize them into, um, into larger and, and different holes. So let's start with the first one, hierarchies. A hierarchy is basically parent and child relationships. It's some form of an outline. And that hierarchy can be represented many different ways. The classic one is that expanding and contracting menu. So the user sees menu, we see hierarchy. It's a hierarchy that's been exposed in an expanding and contracting outline. Or the outline can be static. It can be a set of bullets, indented bullets, bullet, 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 bullet list under bullet list, and that will also represent the hierarchy. Or that hierarchy can be represented as flying out menus with a menu and then the children in a submenu and the grandchildren in a sub-submenu and the great-grandchildren in a sub-submenu after that, on and on. Many different ways of representing that hierarchy. Parts of the hierarchy can be represented, and so each, the user perceives each of these different methods of representing the hierarchy as a different thing. The menu on the side is different from the expanding and contracting thing over here. That indented bullet list is again different. They all seem like different widgets. They all seem like different things. But to us, underneath, they're all the same thing. And what makes them the same thing is that they all represent parent and child relationships. Now, let's look at indexes. Indexes, you might call them the map over the information. It's a set of phrases or terms or even just words that overlie an information base and give us access to the items of the information base. The hierarchy, by the way, I should have said, I should have defined as an outline that 
references or includes items of information at every node of that outline, at every node of that hierarchy. And we've already been talking a lot about hierarchies because that's fundamentally the way an XML file is organized. It's order organized hierarchically. So all those terms, nodes and parents and children and all that kind of stuff that all applies to any hierarchy, just as it applies to an XML file, because that's a hierarchy. So back to indexes. The user perceives each of those ways of representing an index as a very different thing. There are the, all those different forms of list. Underneath those forms of list really are the same concept of an index. And I can use two of the lists that you see on the screen to demonstrate the, the fundamental similarity under the superficial differences. And I guess that's how I, would, that's how I would characterize this in general. There's the superficial, the surface representation of the access, and that's navigation. And then there's the underlying representation. That underlying representation is much simpler and much more straightforward, and, and there's not so many of them, those underlying representations. But the superficial, the surface representations of the, of the access, which we call navigation, are many and varied and may look completely different from each other, even though they're based on the same underlying structure. So as an example of that, let me talk about an index. Suppose we have items of information, and they're all people, they're all faculty members at the University of Washington, and we have some uh, representation of them in a set of information items, one item per faculty member. Then we create an index. It's an alphabetical index by the name of the person. So the A's come before the B's, come before the C's, come before the D's. We've created an underlying index of the items that we've termed faculty member. An information type called faculty member. The faculty members are indexed by name, let's say by last name, all the A's before the B's. Now, how do we represent that index? The index is the index, and in fact, it's an exceedingly simple index to, to, to create. As we'll see later in the course, that index is a no-brainer. One line of code in an XSL transform can create that index, can index all of those items by the last name of the, of the faculty member. So, underlyingly, extremely simple. But on the surface, how do we represent it? Do we represent it as a table with a name in each, uh, a name in the first column and then all the contact information in the other columns? Or do we represent it as a picture board? Each item of information, each faculty member item has all that information in it. It has a name, it has an email address, it has a phone number, and it has an image. But what do we choose to represent on the screen? What widget do we create from that index? In one case, we've created a text table. In the other case, we've created a picture board. We've created a sequential set of images. Each of those underlying has the same access structure. On the surface, they look extremely different. We could have said the same thing for hierarchies. We have a single hierarchy of, let's say, staff by their department in our organization. How do we expose that? How do we create the navigation for that? In the case of the hierarchy, we might choose to, to give it to users as a menu that drops down with cascading department names. We may choose to give it to them as an expanding and contracting table of contents outline. We may choose to give it to them as bullets inside of bullets. We may choose to start it at one organization level and just have the, from that, from that unit on down. We may choose to have it start at the root, which is the organization itself. All those different choices for how to represent that hierarchy. We may put it in a drop-down list box. So you drop down the list box, and it has the organizational hierarchy all with indentations inside that drop-down list box. All different surface representations of exactly the same hierarchy. The hierarchy, from our standpoint, is really what's going on. And the representation of it is just what we've chosen at this time as a representation of it to help people navigate or help people access that information. Similarly with the index, we have one index of our faculty members by last name, and we choose to represent it either as a table or as a picture list. Underlyingly, exactly the same structure. It's an alphabetical index by last name. And how we choose to represent it, whether we put that in a, in a list box, maybe we can put all the names in a list box, you click on one of the names and you go to the page for that person. From our standpoint, those, those decisions are not the important ones. The important ones is that we need an, an index by uh, last name. And then once we have that, we have many, many opportunities or many possibilities for the widget we use to, uh, to show that on the surface.